What is going on, Broskies? It is Lupus, and welcome back to another episode of Lupus Postbox. In this series, you guys send me your Battlefield or gaming-related questions, and I give my in-depth thoughts on the subject. If you would like to submit a question, all you have to do is either comment below or tweet at me on Twitter using the hashtag LupusPostBox and include your question afterwards. Before I get into the actual questions I have for you guys today, I would like to do some clarification because after the last episode, I do feel like it is necessary. I want to explain to you guys what kind of questions I'm actually looking for for this series. Because in my last video, you guys left a lot of Q&A type questions where they were either yes or no questions, very simple questions that didn't have a, that I couldn't really elongate my answer to, and something very simple that I really don't want to make an entire video going over because it just isn't what I'm trying to do. That's not what this series is for. What I am trying to do is find questions that are in-depth, very conversational, something that people would be interested in finding out my opinion and my take on the subject, and something that could either be controversial, informational, news related, what if this happened related, stuff like that, and asking for my opinion so that you guys can better understand what thought processes are going through my mind on the same subjects that are happening all around us. Like, for example, if somebody wanted to ask me, what are my thoughts on Battlefield's current state, and do I really feel like it's that unplayable, or do I think that at its current state that... I still like it, you know, anything like that, or something to do with Titanfall, something to do with upcoming games, what kind of game would I like to see in the future, what kind of DLCs would I like to see, anything like that is what I am looking for. But if you're going to ask me anything like, what's your favorite class, or what's your favorite weapon, or was it hard to unlock this weapon, those are not the kind of questions I am looking for. Hopefully, after today's episode, and I answer all the questions that I have today, you guys will understand that these questions are the types of questions that I'm looking for and you guys can better formulate some really awesome and really interesting questions that will make for a really good and interesting video. Let's go ahead and get started with the questions. Lieutenant Dan V01 asks, do you think there will ever be an amazing game that you go back and play every once in a while like Halo 3 or Call of Duty 4? And I actually feel like Titanfall might be this game because Titanfall takes a lot of things that have already been done before and kind of flips it around, mixes it together, and changes the whole idea behind it. Very similar to what happened with Halo 3 and Call of Duty 4. Halo and Call of Duty 4, Halo 3 and Call of Duty 4 were not the original games in their franchise, but what they did was they took the things from the previous games and just flipped it around, made it even more fun, and just made people enjoy it. That's what made them so successful. Halo 3 took everything from the previous Halos and made it even better. They took what they already had, but they added more stuff on top of that. Call of Duty 4 did the very similar thing, and a really interesting thing about Call of Duty 4 is that at the time, I have the box for my Xbox 360 game copy of it they said they had a quote that said the most photorealistic game to date which means that Call of Duty had a lot of potential back then and the same guys who made that Call of Duty 4 who knew what it took to make a game very awesome and enjoyable are the people who are making Titanfall so that is very encouraging to me that I think that could be potentially that game at the same time the people who created Halo and made that game awesome are also going to be making Destiny I feel like Destiny and Titanfall are going to be those games they are going to be the new Halo 3 and Call of Duty 4, the games that people look back on in the future and think, wow, this game was revolutionary. This game made some changes that may not have been humongous, but they did change a lot of ideas and looks upon things that were already going on. The next question is from It's Raul. He asks, do you think having a map in real life urban location like New York or London would play out well in Battlefield or even Titanfall? I actually think this was a great idea. I love the idea behind this, and that is why I'm looking forward to the Dragon's Teeth DLC that is coming out for Battlefield 4. I'm going to be making a video going over some news and some ideas behind that DLC in the next upcoming days, so stay tuned for that. But basically what Dragon's Teeth is, is an all-American all DLC where they are taking real-life locations and making maps out of those locations. One of them is New York, as you mentioned in your question, and to me that seems like it's going to be something really awesome. Awesome. Imagine if you had either visited New York or visited London and then you ended up playing on a map like that in a video game such as Battlefield or Titanfall and you ended up just 
recollect recollecting your visit at that place it wouldn't feel like you were just playing a game looking at a computer screen you would actually feel like you were there because you had been there before so I feel like if they did that they'd add an even bigger level of immersion which Battlefield already has and I'm assuming Titanfall will have a lot of immersion as well so adding that extra level of immersion would be really awesome because everybody like anybody who had been to any of those locations would feel much more emerged into the game because they had been to that location before and could recollect memories and sights, smells, anything like that and you would just feel like you were actually there again visiting that location all over again. The next question is from Tyler Versteeg. He asks, have you seen the new Lone Survivor movie and if so, did it make you think that playing Battlefield is a little disrespectful to our troops because we are on our butts doing what they do but much more fake while they are out there going through true hell? And my answer to this question is no, I don't really think we are disrespecting them and I'm going to explain why. I know a lot of people who are in the military. I have a cousin who, I have several cousins who are actually in the military. I have a grandfather who is in the military. I have several uncles who are in the military. And they don't really find that disrespectful. It's kind of like a movie that is reenacting, uh, like the Lone Survivor movie, for example. If, Lone Sur if the movie wasn't disrespectful to them, the movie then why would the video game be disrespectful to them? Because it's a very similar idea. Sure, the movie was actually showing a real-life event that actually happened, and video games aren't necessarily showing real-life events, but sometimes showing that real-life event in much more detail would be considered more disrespectful than just depicting an in-general type of thing. And another thing is that a lot of people who are in the modern military now, any Marines, in the Army, uh, Navy, anything like that, they actually have game lounges in like in Afghanistan and stuff like that that sometimes they will relax and play games on and a lot of people in the military play Battlefield or Call of Duty that's like the most common two games that they play so if they were finding them disrespectful why would they play them they play them a lot because they they, they think it can kind of uh, ease the intensity behind what they are doing because they're doing such amazing work and they're protecting our country and going through true hell as you mentioned and playing those games kind of loosens the load and makes them feel like hey I'm still a regular person I still want to play these video games and without those video games how do we even remember them because to be honest video games are one of the big reasons how people remember the military because a lot of people play military based video games a lot and a lot of people know a lot about the military through these video games. So if we didn't have video games such as Battlefield that kind of informed us, it's very poor information, it's not very direct information, but it does inform us in some sense, then we wouldn't really understand how it was. And I know we're kind of reenacting what they're doing, and I do think that people who actually imitate the military, that's sort of disrespectful, but if you're doing it in a purely uh, pre preparational way if you're actually thinking about joining the military and you would like to just play with some friends and kind of play strategically maybe go into an empty lobby and do stuff like that then I don't really find it disrespectful I really honestly find it very uh, respectful in a way I find that it helps people remember the military and helps us think about all that they have done for us so no I don't really think it's disrespectful but I can understand why some people would think that the next question is from Darth Gabrich. He asks, do you think that Star Wars Battlefront 3 should have a sort of premium membership like Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4? Do you think the DICE should even add DLC to the game? Yes, I think there should be a premium membership. I hope that every game decides to incorporate premium membership because in my opinion, you're spending way less money, getting way more stuff, and it's all very worth it. If you guys have not already gotten premium for Battlefield 4 because you feel like the game is too broken, as everybody is saying, then I would recommend getting premium because the game's going to be fixed eventually. They're not just going to leave it broken. I'm assuming in the next month they will have it pretty much fixed because they're not just going to let people continue to talk trash about the game. And at that time, they're going to start coming out with the, all the rest of the DLCs. And if you don't have premium, you're going to be playing. You're going to be paying up to twice as much for all of the DLCs as somebody with premium. And plus, somebody with premium has access to double XP events, extra knives, extra camo, stuff like that. And if they were to incorporate that into Battlefront 3, that would be amazing because imagine you'd have different stormtrooper costumes premium people could unlock um, you'd be able to have different dro droids that you could end up becoming you could have 
all kinds of things that you could end up getting with a premium membership as well as paying for DLCs at a lower price. And I definitely think that DICE should add DLC to the game. Add extra planets, add extra battlegrounds, add extra vehicles, add extra weapons, extra character models, all kinds of stuff. There should definitely be a DLC in Battlefront and if they do not add a DLC to the new Battlefront game then I will be very disappointed because that game definitely needs it. The last and final question is from Battlefield Daily. He asks, what aspect of Titanfall are you most excited about? And honestly, I have to say that I'm most excited about seeing the single player events within the multiplayer. Because I think that that is going to add a really awesome, epic single player moments within the multiplayer, adding a lot of immersion, as I've said a thousand times. I really do think that stuff like that does add immersion to the game. And I feel like it's going to be an all new experience that has never before been done. And I'm very interested to see how that turns out. And whether it turns out good or bad, it will definitely be an experience that I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to. And that is definitely what I am most excited about. That is all for today's episode of Lupus Postbox. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys would like to leave your questions, I explained that you can either leave it in the comment section down below or tweet at me on Twitter using the hashtag Lupus Postbox and include your question afterwards. I hope these questions that I answer today kind of clarify what kind of questions I am looking for so that I can have a lot of really good questions for next week's episode. Um, but anyways guys, that is all for today's episode and I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys did, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to hear your questions in the comment section down below. But as always, this has been Lupus and I will catch you guys in the next one.